Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Please adjust your settings either above and below. And the message that I am going to be covering today is one from 2021, June 27th, 2021. I'm continuing with the Supernatural series. I'm continuing with Fallen Angels, looking at hybrids, looking at demonic manifestations that the Lord God wants his people to be aware will be coming to this earth in the last days. So I'm currently in the series that I'm going to call the Fallen series, the Supernatural series. If you haven't already looked into that, you can look at the playlist on this channel. And I think there should be about five or six videos of that nature already. But right now I will be focusing on the fallen angels. I already started with aliens, um, upcoming alien disclosure and things like that. So we're going to be continuing for as long as the Lord God would have me in this series. Before I go any further, just uh, a few basic things. If you're new to this channel and you have not subscribed, you're welcome to subscribe. If that's how you are so led, understand that to those who subscribe, um, this channel offers something that I, I've been making use of now and then called the community page. So the community page is where I share things that the Lord God speaks to me or shows me, but they don't really constitute a full blog post. So I've said that the Lord is constantly speaking to me, constantly revealing different things, but it's not always a full prophetic word that I can open up the blog, the mastersvoice.com. The information for that is below. I can open up the blog and make a full post and say, thus saith the Lord. Not everything that the father shares or divulges with me is something like that. Sometimes it's just FYI, heads up celestial. Did you know this celestial or information that is very interesting and helpful to know, but it's not something that I need to publish formally on the blog. So I tend to share those things on my community page and the community page can only be seen by subscribers. So if you subscribe, you will be able to see the things that I put there. I think something very interesting that the Lord shared with me mm, in the final days of 2021 was that we are entering the time where the fallen. And when I say the fallen, I'm talking about everything from, uh, this group of beings that people call cryptids. I haven't actually looked into to that word to find out what it means, but if we're talking about, I guess, um, creatures, creatures like the Wendigo creatures, like, um, you know, just those big hairy things that live in the mountains, different types of creatures like that, cryptids and aliens and things like that. The Lord has said that we are entering the time where they will become increasingly bold. And this is because if we look at the core and the crux of why I'm sharing this information with God's church, it is because the church is moving out of her age. We are moving actually, let me share the Lord's exact words before I started he said, tell them that the time of men and the rule of men is ending. Tell them that the devil knows he has a short time left and he is going to make the most of it. So before I get into that, um, let me finish with the basic housekeeping. I was speaking about the community page and what the community page is basically there for is just to share things that the Lord has laid on my heart, things that the Lord has revealed to me, but that I'm not going to actually publish on the master's voice. So if you're a subscriber, you'll be able to see that pop up just like a video pops up. The next thing is that I would like to keep encouraging people, whether you're new, whether you, this video was just shared um, to you by someone, a family member, or you just found it through scrolling, however you found it, please take the time to go to the original work for this channel, which is the mastersvoice.com and make a habit of reading these prophecies for yourself. I cannot stress how important it is that when you study prophecy or when you hear prophecy, prophecy is not tested by you saying, I don't like the way this sounds, or this doesn't sound right to me, or why would God do that? None of that is how you filter the prophetic word. The prophetic word can only be filtered by the Holy Spirit, and that means that you have to first understand it, secondly, internalize it, and then thirdly, you take it in prayer. 
The spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the spirit of prophecy. He is the spirit of the Lord. And the Bible says that one of his, one of his jobs, one of his functions is that he will take of that which is of me. This is the Lord speaking, not me celestial, but the Lord Jesus Christ. He will take of that, which is of me and make it known to you. So when somebody brings the prophetic word of the Lord to you, it is not your human spirit, Bob or Susan, or whoever you might be that judges that prophecy. It is actually the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, which we will assume is dwelling within the believer. He will judge the word as whole or not whole, as sure or not sure, as true or not true. So the best thing that I can say is that as you spend time reading the prophetic words for yourself, you will develop an ear for God's voice within any human voice. As it is, there are too many people who are being misled by people who, as my old pastor used to say, just had a slice of pizza and wake up in the morning and say something. The way that you will test genuine prophecy is when the Holy Spirit inside you testifies, even though this is frightening on the surface, or even though this may be startling on the surface, this is the word of the Lord. And so on this channel, that is what I am bringing. And so no matter how unorthodox the subject matter, these are things that God wants his people to know. And since the Lord has given me my commission and basically said that his true people who know his voice will know that he is speaking and will begin to prepare themselves for the years multiplied S years that are ahead, then I will faithfully deliver these messages and I will trust God that those who hear them, those who are his true sheep, that hear his voice and understand that he is calling on them to rise to a higher level, to prepare for the times that are ahead of us, these people will do so. As for the rest, scoffers will scoff and mockers will mock and none of those things move me. They have absolutely nothing to do with me. As long as I'm faithful to what God has asked me to do, uh, my heart is peaceful and secure. And so I read what the Lord said, January 6, 2022, the time of men and the rule of men, that is the dominion of men is ending. The devil knows he has a short time left and he is going to make the most of it. And so When we talk about the time of men, we're basically talking about the time that human beings have had to have rule and dominion over the planet for us to be the lords and masters over everything that is on the earth, the resources, the animal, the trees, um, the seas, everything, all of that, that time for Adam and Eve to rule that the Lord says is coming to an end. And now we're going to see a shift that puts power in the hand of Satan Um, And Satan is going to be largely and primarily at the beginning ruling through Adam and Eve also. So the time that God has given human beings to be in charge of this gift of life, this gift of this world that God has given us is now drawing to a close. And what God is saying here is that his church, and even if you're not a, a member of God's church, even if you're not born again and you're watching this video, power is now passing to the entity known as the devil, the entity known as Satan. There may be those that think that the devil is just um, uh, the idea of the eternal baddie, but I encourage you, if you come to this channel, you might have to let go of a lot of juvenile ways of thinking, thinking that things like good and evil are constructs. They absolutely are not. God is real. The Lord Jesus Christ is real. The Holy Spirit is real. The good that they embody um, as one is real. And, um, the opposite of that good is actually evil. And the funny thing is, is it's a weird thing, right? Christians believe in the presence of good and evil. They believe in God and they believe in the devil, at least learned Christians who actually read the Bible. But it's curious how many people do not believe in the existence of evil. So they live in a world where evil is very much present. Evil is, is very easy to perceive and see. In fact, evil is even present with us as people. Evil is always trying to rise for supremacy in the form of maybe selfishness or um, cowardliness or fear or jealousy. And in so many um, 
unpleasant emotions that are present with us as people. And then we see the fruit of evil in the society around us, the pain, the hurt, the carnage that we cause as people because of sin. And yet there persists this so-called academic idea that evil does not exist. And and, and the weird and, and the sad thing about it is that the people that the Lord is speaking to that are actually rising to prominence now, people who deeply serve and worship a satanic and a demonic agenda, they know that evil exists. They fully believe in evil. They serve and bow to evil with all their heart. They have struck hands of covenant with evil, and they are dedicated and committed to carrying out the brainchild of Satan to its full fruition as told in the Bible. And yet there's this huge community of people that live in this uninformed, uneducated limbo that think that evil is just a construct or evil is just the big bad wolf idea that comes from Christianity to try to control them. And nothing could be further from the truth. So as I was spending time with the Lord before I started this video, it it became clear to me that the only way that we are going to survive in this world that God is talking about, this world that has already started rising in 2020 and 2021, if you think that the things that have happened in this world, such as all economies being brought to this hard shutdown, hard meltdown point where so many people have lost their livelihoods, so many other people have lost lost their jobs. We're finding ourselves internationally under increasingly draconian mandates and being squeezed by rules and laws that are being rammed home into reality without even being passed through the normal challenge, um, the normal um, paradigms by which our laws are made. If you think that these things are happening by accident, then you might just be one of those people that's lost in this, uh, a big fat soup in thinking that these things are just happening by chance. They're actually happening by design. People are writing books about it. The great reset books are out there and yet people, um, still have this idea that, The governments of this world are driving the truck with the rest of us in the back safely and that we can trust them to take us to a destination that is good and wholesome for us and nothing could be further from the truth. God is warning his people and God is warning anyone with ears to listen that the only way to survive in the world ahead is to be a spiritual person. And when I say a spiritual person, for instance, I'm going to touch on the use of your faith in spirituality. So faith is the core of the walk that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, now faith is. So faith has to be a very real and a very right now thing. Faith is the substance of the things that we are hoping for. It is the evidence of things that we cannot see. In other words, faith is the expression of the human heart to trust in the words of God to the fulfillment of to the fulfillment of what? To the fulfillment of whatever the evidence is that we are hoping to see. So the evidence of a promotion or the evidence of being able to bear a child or the evidence of the Lord healing our physical body when it is under attack by sickness or disease. Faith is the substance that actually rolls back what we can see with the eyes and touch with the hands and perceive with our senses and replaces it with the supernatural manifestation of God's power to do. To do what? To do whatever we need the Lord to do for us. And so if we're going to survive in this world ahead, we will have to be spiritual people. That means that we cannot continue to live by our senses. We cannot continue to live as sensual people who just see a thing and say, oh, it must be a thing because I see it with my eyes. It's it's not going to work like that. You're on this channel and you're hearing about hybrids and you're hearing about um, Nephilim that the Lord is revealing are not actually um, the offspring of 
physical fallen angels mating with women anymore, but are actually a whole brand new pantheon of created creatures that the enemy is creating by means of science, by means of witchcraft, and yet they have the look and the appearance of people. And so if you're, if we're navigating those kinds of waters and you're still trying to refer to your human ability to say, oh, I know what a person is. A person is what celestial looks like right now with flesh and everything like that. If you're still in that world, then you're going to find yourself at a great disservice because we are where, for want of a better word, the occult agenda is going to put an abracadabra before you and it will look and smell and walk like a duck and actually it will be a python. And if you do not have the spirit of the Lord God, excuse me, working in you and speaking to you from the inner man and telling you all is not as it appears, you will not be able to survive um, where we are going because things are not going to get easier. Things are actually going to become a lot more niche, meaning they're going to be tighter and tighter, tougher and tougher. And you are going to need to know how to call upon the Lord. You are going to need to know how to truly, truly trust in his word. You are going to have to know how to read the Bible and believe what it says. For instance, if you are someone who has recently lost their job or lost their employment or lost a career because of the current situation with the ongoing, you know what, in the world today, um, you might have discovered that there was a gap between your confession of faith in Jesus Christ and the hard living on the ground. So when you lose your job, when you lose your finances, or when you have to start digging into savings and you don't know where you're going to get your next paycheck, or if you're ever going to be able to get back into the job market, especially because the requirements now are insane. And everybody knows I'm talking about the fact that you have to have an injectable to even breathe nowadays, especially in some many parts of the USA, then you might have found that that kumbaya relationship that you had with Jesus Christ clapping and oh, life is so good. Life was actually good because you had a job and your employer made sure to put that direct deposit in your bank account every month. But now that you've actually lost the physical outward provision, you are discovering for the first time what Psalm 23 means when it says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You are now praying that verse, I shall not want with all your heart and all your soul, because now it is by that verse that you are going to live. This is what it means in Romans chapter one and verse 17, when it says the just shall live by his faith, the just shall live by her faith. It literally means what it says. And so if I can give you any advice for 2022, when you read the Bible, stop giving it your fluffy interpretation. Stop taking it into this metaphorical pie in the sky interpretation. Allow the book to speak for itself. And when it says the just, which means those who have been justified by faith in God, shall live by faith. It means that the daily exercise of the Christian's life is going to take place by faith or it's not going to take place at all. So if you have lost the mechanical outward provision in your life, for instance, you are now finding that you have to get down on your knees and begin to speak the promises of God that say, if you give, it will be given to you. That speak the promises of God that says, the Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Now you're on your knees. Now you're serious in prayer time. And now you're telling the Lord, heavenly father, I am so glad that your word says that you will supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. I've never been to glory. I'm not sure exactly how extensive the riches that you have up there are, but I am letting you know as a child of God, that I and these three children and this woman have serious needs that we are trusting you to supply according to your riches. That is what it means when it says that the just shall live by his faith. So the exercise of faith in this time and going forward is going to sharply separate the sheep from the goats and the spiritual from the unspiritual. 
you will find that if your faith has been rusty because you've had a comfortable life up to now, that challenges that have come already and that will continue to come are going to place a demand of the anointing of God in your life that has been inactive, that you have been ignoring, that you have just been coasting along by the seat of your pants and thinking that is Christianity. I can assure you, brothers and sisters, that is not Christianity because Jesus would not have said, Will the son of man still find faith on the earth when he comes? Understand that faith is an extremely rare commodity, even in the church. There are very few Christians who actually know and understand what faith is, and there are even fewer among us who know how to use it. Most of us speak a good game, but when the pressure is on, all you find in Christianity now is a lot of chatter, a lot of online talk, a lot of asking one another, what are you doing and how are you handling it and what are you, what are you doing? Talk is not faith. Faith is the thing that will actually produce the results that people see. So it's time to get serious with the word of God because if Jesus was asking if he would still find faith on the earth when he returns, that should tell some of us that we're not being lifted off this planet as soon as the hysteria crowd would want you to believe off there, out there. Because if Jesus is asking if faith will still be available when he comes, he's asking a very deep question that we need to look into for ourselves. He's asking, will anyone still even believe and still be standing when I come? So that should tell you that it will be a very squeezed and painful time that will come to the church before the Lord comes. And so it was a very brief word that the Lord gave me. Um, This post, the fallen one will return. The fallen ones will return June 27, 2021. It contains a lot of teaching. And so if you would like to go to the blog and read the post for yourself, you can actually learn a lot because there I share a lot of biblical um, principles that that undergird the prophetic word so that we can understand the heart of the God that we are serving, the heart of the God who loves us, the heart of the God who is warning us. And the scripture is this, and the angels that kept not their first estate, but they left their own habitation. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And that is Jude chapter one and verse six. The other scripture is this, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels understand that hell is real and that there is a fire that has been prepared not only for the devil and his angels, but for all lawbreakers who will cling to sin. Understand that Satan has a role to play and this is the reason that God has left him on this planet with us. Satan and the fallen angels and aliens are not in any far off space dimension. It does not matter even when they appear in the sky as they will in those very intimidating and dazzling ships that they will travel in and come with lights and display and a lot of color and a lot of promises. They just live in a separate dimension from us. In my last video, I shared about how if I am here and my neighbor's next door and vacuuming or moving furniture around, I can hear those sounds. My neighbor is not on some far off galaxy 22 light years away. This is a deception and this is a lie. My neighbor is right next door, separated from my current dimension by a wall and some plaster, but I can hear my neighbor next door in the same building as me on the same street under the same sky. And this is exactly the positioning of the devil and the fallen. They are right here on the earth, under the earth, in the atmosphere above us where Satan was cast down by the Lord into the lower heavens where he's not exactly where the atmosphere is, the, um, the, the movement of weather and things like that. They are higher in the second heaven, but they're still encapsulated in the dimensions of earth. They're still part and parcel of where we humanity are. And God wants us to be aware of this. And so here is the word fallen angels will come to the United States of America. They will be right here ruling over them exactly as they used to rule over men in ancient times. They will take tribute from America. They will make demands of them. They will tell them how to run the government. They will tell them how to elect leadership. They will tell them how to run the entire nation in terms of what must be done or not be done. 
They will be rulers over this nation the way Nimrod was a ruler. But even more than that, the fallen will completely rule and dominate America the way ancient gods infiltrated and dominated Egypt and established themselves as the heads of the father's houses. That is why ancient Egypt is a fascination to everyone. The gods ruled there and lived there in full view of everyone. The fallen angels will do the same things in the sight of all these people with whom you dwell, celestial. The gods will return and their home will be right here in America. That is it. Put it up and tell them what I said. Gods will be in America. And so I've often spoken about how the Lord has said to me that when these fallen angels come back, they will come back in different dispensations. The fallen angels are, of course, the highest, the highest level of these unclean, satanic, and demonic creatures. So understand, once an angel, as the Lord says in Jude chapter 1 and verse 6, once an angel has left his first estate, and I say his because there are no female angels. So all these depictions that you see on the internet and all these memes and all these drawings, this is just the fantastic the fantastical imaginings of people drawing female angels with their wings on their back and all that. The Lord has just male servants. And I've often said that Christianity predates feminism in all its very awkward forms. God is not here and running his operation according to the fact that women want equality and women want this and women want that. Myself as a woman, I'm totally happy and content with whatever it is that God has established because God is such an ancient, 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 timeless, ageless being that it's really the height of arrogance for me or any other woman to think that our opinions are going to count in getting him to rethink his design and rethink his order. God was not asleep when he made Adam first and God was not asleep when he gave the dominion to Adam before Adam even had a wife. And so God's design in things is perfect. And one of the reasons that God is clear when he shares that he only has male servants, this will help us to understand why these male servants were so interested in females in the first place. You must understand that the Bible doesn't always have to spell out everything because God is, for better or worse, assuming that as we study, our minds will be opened and our understanding will be enlightened. Understand that if you see something and you are exposed to something, it's not going to have the same effect on you as if you've never seen it before. So all those, for instance, who follow this, oh no, Adam had a wife before and it was Lilith and all this, this is just you actually running down various little rabbit trails that come out of the Talmud, which is not the word of God. For those of you who are thinking that it's part and parcel and equal to the word of God, it absolutely is not. It is nothing but a collection of rabbinical tales that they have to give supposed flesh and color to what is in the scripture. But if you actually study Adam's reaction to his wife when God brought her to him, you will understand that this man had never seen anything like the beauty of the naked woman that was put in front of him. Because when God brought his wife to him, Adam became downright poetic, prophetic, and lyrical start talking about bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And yet the man was asleep when God made the woman and he should have had absolutely no idea of where she came from. Yet he was prophetic in his response and he instantly knew and recognized what this was. This was not the response of somebody who had a first wife and had given birth to whatever people say that he had, she had given birth to. And, and this is how you need to study the Bible. You need to actually pay close attention to the text so that the heart of the God that's trying to commune with you and teach you can be available to you and that you won't move in confusion. And so angels were gazing down at the earth and looking at women because women are not a thing that's up there. They don't have sister angels up there. It is just them. It is an, an all male, uh, uh, serv servant, and master set up up there. And so they were gazing down at the women 
and fascinated by them. And these are things that the Lord has just shared with me. And I spoke of them in one of the video that angels, the watchers who actually fell, the Lord said, became transfixed by particularly watching the human act of love, not only the act of sexual intimacy, sexual love, but the way that a man and a woman are when they fall in love, they became overly interested in this until it became a hook in their hearts, a fascination. And this is why you see them saying in the book of Enoch chapter seven, come and let us go down there and by mutual agreement, do this thing. So they already knew before they did it that it was going to be a sin. It was going to be what, what is called an incursion into the earth, which means basically making an unscheduled trip that you do not actually have the authority to make. So they knew from the beginning that they were going to be stepping outside of their first estate, which is the heavenly realm, the spiritual realm where they are not supposed to partake in physical things like intimacy and the sexual partnership that God has given us to indulge in one man, one woman in the marital covenant only. And so these fallen angels will come to the United States as the Lord says, and they will be here ruling. Now they're not going to be ruling at first in an open fashion. So they're not going to be ruling where your eyes can see them, where your eyes and my eyes can see them. The Lord says that they are going to take tribute and make demands, and they are going to tell the government of this country how to run how to choose and elect leaders, how to run the entire nation. I shared in one prophecy, I think it was in 2020, that America is going to come to a place and may have already come to that place where the decisions that the different administrations will make will seem to make no natural sense. So the choices that the government is going to start to make, the decisions that they make, I shared like this. If there's a great decision, a decision that's pretty good, not as perfect as the first one, but a pretty good decision that could work. And then an okay decision and then a bad decision. And then a final decision. That's like, what the, what are you thinking? The Lord says that America is consistently going to choose from the last two groups. So I'm not saying this administration or that administration, when you come to this channel, I really need you to understand that this is not your, this is not your political poly channel where I'm using my emotions and my feelings and my views and guesswork. I'm sharing with you prophetic truths from the spirit of the Lord so that those who have hearing ears can prepare for the things the father says that we are going to, to have to live through, to live through. So we need to understand that this is not, oh, what do you think? And uh, these are my views. I'm sharing with you things that the Lord has revealed so that when you see them taking place, you will know what is happening behind. The Lord said that the government will make the worst possible choices that have the greatest negative impact on citizens. And this is actually going to be part of what eventually drives the outbreak of civil war in the United States. The United States is going to have its own civil war. I recently shared messages on the blog. You're welcome to go in and watch and read them. And Part of it is because the Lord says that the government will go rogue. So if you're wondering why and how the government will go rogue, it is because the government is going to absolutely stop making any pretense of upholding American values, American outlooks, and working on upholding an, an American agenda. The agenda that the U.S. government is going to start pushing very strongly will have little to nothing to do with this country itself. The government will start pushing a satanic agenda. The government is going to start pushing a demonic one world agenda that is driven by the presence of creatures that are teaching and informing and instructing the leadership what to do, who to choose, what to who to put in what seat, who to appoint where. And what you're going to see is basically the movement of Geppetto, the puppeteer, moving Pinocchio 
the puppet. So you're going to see the movements happening on TV and the news and the different departments of government, just as you see my fingers moving, but there's strings attached that are being moved from a higher plane. And behind that ultimate higher plane is the one we know as Satan, the evil that I spoke of in the beginning of this video. And so the Lord says that the nation will be ruled completely and dominated by ancient gods. And that if we are looking for a parallel to where this existed before in history, we should look no further than ancient Egypt. He said that the fallen ones as gods infiltrated Egypt and they established themselves as the heads of the father's houses. There are more than enough legends in ancient history, not only in Egypt, but in many other cultures where the people, the people actually had this belief that those who were ruling them were not people. And this is because in the early days, the fallen were actually the first Kings. They were the first Kings and the first Queens. And as they continued mating with people, that is how they more and more began to take on the appearance of mortal flesh and their eyes began to come down to the right size and everything like that. But inside they were carrying a DNA and a nature that so-called came from the stars. And nobody preserves these legends and these stories at least here in the United States, better than, um, the native Americans or the American, um, yeah, the native Americans, nobody preserves these stories of ancient gods that lived with men and looks like men, but were not men better than, um, the native Americans. They constantly talk about people that came from the stars, the family from the stars. And this is what the Lord is speaking about. And eventually the end result of this will be that these creatures will come out in full view of everyone. So there are many, many prophecies on the master's voice, um, even in the UFO series that you are welcome to go and read and look among the videos, there are videos on this channel that you can watch where I have shared by the spirit of the Lord dreams that the Lord showed me where we will be living with these creatures. And if you don't like it, you will just have to go and live in the human only commune. You will just have to go off to the further areas. They are going to have further areas that are more fringe areas that are not as nice areas that are not as well developed. And that is where people who just want to live with people, um, will live. But for the most part, the nation will be given over to embrace and welcome brothers from the sky. And like I said, they may come down from the sky physically, but they're just right next door. They're part of the same dimension. And so that is what the Lord said to put up this prophecy and tell them what I said, gods will be in America. So I am celestial and thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for subscribing. If you do subscribe, thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for sharing these videos. Make sure that you go to the mastersvoice.com and spend time reading these prophetic words because you are going to get a lot of information that you may not otherwise know and broaden your understanding in preparation for the times which are ahead, times where um, whether we like it or not and whether we even believe it or not, these creatures will be announced. They will be announced. I've already shared that in previous videos that they will be announced. And the government is going to absolutely pretend that it's a brand new shock to them, but it is not. The Lord says that they have known about and been involved with these creatures for at least 60 years. So as you're watching this video and hearing the word government, please do not come with your usual frenzy of this party or that party, because I literally have no interest in that. When the Lord gives a 50 to 60 year time frame, he is basically telling the modern American, the modern American living in this era era that for as long as you have been alive, your government has known about these things and been involved with them. And if you look back, it has spanned tons of presidents, nearly 10 presidents. So it's not the question of one particular president. It's actually about a much more painful realization that you live in a nation with leaders that lie habitually and that lie compulsively and that withhold very important, um, information from the public, uh, to the hurt and the danger 
and eventually the destruction of the public. So um, thank you for being with me. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up um, so that it gets widely shared and please share with someone else um, prayerfully as the Lord leads you. I understand that not everybody wants to hear these things, but we are in the time where whether people want to hear it or not, they're either going to hear it from a source that's telling the truth or they're going to hear it from the news and follow the news spin um, to their destruction. Thank you always for supporting this channel. Thank you to those of you who donate to this channel. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your gifts. God bless you so much. And may the Lord return it to you in multiples. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you and your family. And until I see you again, God bless you and bye for now.